from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Tony DiCerlisi was raised in South Florida and has been drawing since he was very young. He was inspired by Dungeons and Dragons and one of his first jobs was working for the publisher of Dungeons and Dragons. He's illustrated many picture books, including the Caldecott honor winner, The Spider and the Fly, has written an acclaimed chapter book, Kenny and the Dragon, and has collaborated with Holly Black on the hugely successful Spiderwick Chronicles series. Holly Black was born and raised in New Jersey, spending her childhood reading about ghosts and fairies. She's written many fantasy novels for teens and children, starting with her first book in 2002. The final book in the Beyond the Spiderwick Chronicles, The Worm King, has just been published. Please help me welcome Tony DiCerlisi and Holly Black. This is for all my friends on Facebook that I'll be watching this later. <laughs> all right, let me give it to my wife. Thanks. How you guys doing? <laughs> it's great to be back. It's so good. This is our. This is actually our, our third, third time. Third, yeah. uh, you know, we uh, we were banned for how many years? <laughs> and then they said, "Okay, you can come back. We'll try it again." But um, we're absolutely excited. Thank you guys for coming out in the rain on a weekend. It really means a lot to us. Thank you guys. Yes. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we're, so, we're pretty excited, right? We're really excited because this is, um, actually, we're really excited, but this is kind of bittersweet for us because this is our last tour for our last book together. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and this is not like Barbara Streisand, where we're like, no, this is the last tour, really. We're not. We're never gonna do it. No, really. This is. This is. We wanted to uh, finish the Spiderwick books on a high note, and we had always had ideas for a, sec a second sequel story, and we were happy to do it. And uh, basically, we didn't want to jump the shark. Right, Holly? We didn't run it. As you like to say, yes. Yes. Um, so how many of you are familiar with the Spider Chronicles? Woo! Our work is done! Thank you! <laughs> so for those of you who are not, those of you who are, are going to help me with a little summary of the story so far. So the first five books of the spider Rick Chronicles are about three kids named... Jared, Simon, and Mallory, thank you, um, who move to their great-great-uncle Arthur Spiderwick's house, uh, which is this old, dilapidated manor, uh, and a lot of things start to go wrong and get blamed on Jared, and Jared decides he's gonna find the culprit, and so he looks around through many old trunks and finds a field guide that his great-great-uncle created, but it, it's not a field guide to fairies the way he thought of them, like little tiny sprites with wings. It also has lots of other creatures like goblins and trolls and... Nixies. And? Pixies. And? Dragons. Giants. Giants. Ogres, pukas. And many other <laughs> creatures. <laughs> And so, chaos and mayhem ensues. Uh, now, at the end of the spider egg books, with our help, uh, the field guide was published so that you all could get into as much trouble as Jared and Simon and Mallory did. And in the second series, three kids actually get a hold of a field guide from a bookstore uh, and, and do get into a lot of trouble. Does anyone know the kids from the Beyond the Spider Chronicles? Does anyone know their names? Nick, Jules, and who's Nick's stepsister? <laughs> anyone? <laughs> yes. Lori, Lori, that's right. Nick, Jules, and Lori, and they wind up in the last book, in The Worm King, actually getting in so much trouble that they need to call on Jared, Simon, and Mallory to get them out of it. Right. So a lot of people want to know how Holly and I kind of came up with the ideas for the spider Week books and how uh, we came together to craft the stories. And one of the things that um, Holly and I have been friends for a long time, 
And one of the things that we have in common is we love old fairy tales. I love like the old Brothers Grimm's fairy tales, like Snowdrop, uh, Rumpelstiltskin. Absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't realize that you were gonna, you know, name, put me on name the some. Yeah. I actually did read them. I actually, well done. That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, we also, I loved Hans Christian Andersen's uh, fairy tales, Andrew Lang's Rainbow Fairy books. Anyone a fan of Andrew Lang's Rainbow Fairy books? And Holly, you also loved old folklore. I do. I love, um, there were a lot of people who went out uh, all over the world and collected old stories of folklore. Um, do, does anyone, do you, do you feel, anyone know what folklore, want to give me a definition, a working definition of folklore? You should tell them, Hal. I should just talk? Tell them right. what, what folklore um, is. So folklore is often stories, just stories of common people, stories of people like us, things that happen locally, rather than mythology, which is often stories of the gods, stories of how the world was created, stories about why there is rain. <laughs> Folklore is more about, like, why does our local well smell so bad? <laughs> you know, a hundred years ago, there was a dragon, and he died down there. <laughs> and forever after, it has had this smell. And, you know, folklore is stuff that happens to us. And that's what I love so much about it, because it's about people's regular lives sort of rubbing up against the fantastical. Right, right. So you, we looked at a lot of old folklore. We looked at a lot of old bestiaries. But in particular, there was one book I remember you brought early on that we looked at, uh, Dermot McManus's Middle Kingdom. Yeah, I love, I, um, there's a couple of folklorists that I really love their work. W.Y. Evans Wentz's Fairy Faith in Celtic Countries is one. Robert Kirk, uh, who, Robert Kirk is an interesting guy because he eventually disappeared on a fairy mound. Like, truly, Robert Kirk is gone. The fairies have taken him. <laughs> it's on Wikipedia, if you don't believe me. Um, <laughs> What, Wikipedia isn't true all the yeah, time? Yeah, that's it's all fact. <laughs> yes, um, absolutely. But also Dermot McManus. And Dermot's interesting because the Middle Kingdom was published in 1959, which is later than a lot of the folklorists that are often cited. And Dermot wanted to do something different with his book of folklore. He wanted it to be more like a history. And so he had two rules. One was in all the stories, somebody still who knew the story, who was in some way a participant in the story, still had to be alive. And his second rule was that he had to know them. Now, I don't know how well he had to know them, but he had to know <laughs> them well enough that he was willing to vouch for them. So um, one of my, I'll tell you one of my favorite stories from the Middle Kingdom. There's, uh, there's one story about this gentleman who uh, wanted to build a house. And at that time, you were supposed to do one of two things to make sure that you weren't building, you weren't building your house on fairy land. You could either consult the local fairy specialist or you could take a plot of dirt, turn it over, come back the next day, and if it had been flipped back, then, you know, fairy land, don't do that. So <laughs> he didn't do it. He, he either was, didn't believe or was really lazy. Um, but he didn't do anything. He just built his house, and he moved himself and his wife into it. And they went to bed, put their stuff away, went to bed. And that night, there was a horrible rumbling, like a train was going past their house. But they built it in the middle of nowhere. There was no train. There was nothing to make all the noise that rattled their walls and made their pans bang against one another. And so the next morning, they thought, huh, we appear to have made a tactical error. And they went to the fairy specialist who said, yeah, you built your house on a fairy path, and they don't like that. Fairies don't go around things. Um, so he said, well, what do I do? Because as previously established in this story, I'm very lazy. <laughs> um, and the local fairy expert said, well, you're in luck because you only built a corner of your house on the fairy path. And so he cut off the corner of his house. And here's a picture <laughs> of the house, which was not only lived in by, by him, but also by uh, his ancestors, who were clearly also lazy. Um, <laughs> and the interesting thing about this is that after that, there were no more disturbances, except on certain nights, a wind would come around and whip right around that corner. And that's it. That's the whole of the story. 
All right, so that's a, that's an interesting story of folklore and and how it inspired the Spiderwick books. Uh, one of the other things that was a big key into uh, inspiring the Spiderwick books were old bestiaries, which I'm fascinated with. And a lot of these old bestiaries are actually still being reprinted by like Dover Publications. And basically, all a bestiary is is way back when when um, early uh, travelers and explorers were uh, describing and chronicling all the animals that they encountered. They wanted to put them all in one big, giant book. So there'd be drawings of antelopes, wildebeests, um, the, the rare and exotic camel leopard, which was a, a beast with long legs and a long neck, which we now today call the giraffe. But also in these old bestiaries, you would find drawing upon drawing of various species of unicorns, manticores, griffins, and I absolutely love the idea that these old bestiaries were the Wikipedia of their time. So nice. um, while we were working on the new Spiderwick books, one of the things Holly and I wanted to do was we wanted to put a new creature in uh, the stories that had not been chronicled in Arthur's Field Guide. So I had picked up this, well actually not this, I picked up a big version of this, but this is a little version of it, of a old bestiary that was published in 1731 by a pharmacist by the name of Albertus Seba. Now among being a pharmacist, Albertus's other hobby was collecting bits of natural history, like insects, seashells, preserved birds and animals, and eventually he put them into a book he called the Cabinet of Natural Curiosities. So this here has an example of some of his drawings. Wait for it. So here's some butterflies, some exotic butterflies from his butterfly collection. Butterflies, butterflies. I'll show you one more. Let me find a good one. This one always one like this. There's a boa constrictor that he drew from an actual specimen. And in the middle, in the middle of Albertus Seba's bestiary, we find this. Wait for it. Wait for it. I promise it's good. In the middle of Albertus Seba's bestiary, we find this. 1731. Fact. Considered real. Considered truth. Anybody have any ideas what this monster might be? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Yes, sir. A hydra. Nice. Very nice, yes. The mythical and fantastic beast, the Hydra, which Hercules supposedly battled. But here we find it in a bestiary in 1731, which when you think about it, isn't that long ago. <laughs> I mean, they didn't have Wikipedia back then. It's a little bit long ago. It's a little bit, not that long ago. Um, what I love about this drawing is Siba doesn't know where to classify the Hydra. He puts it on a plate with um, birds, like exotic uh, rainforest, tropical birds, and a flying lizard, possibly from New Zealand or Australia. And so when I came across this, I was so excited. I called Holly up and I said, Holly, check this out. Hydra, bestiary, ka -ching. <laughs> Because we wanted to have a creature in the Beyond the Spiderwick books that was never in Arthur Spiderwick's field guide. Um, the work, I mean, Arthur Spiderick is just one guy, and he made, making his field guide to the fantastical world, his life's work, but he must have gotten some things wrong, and he must have left some things out. And so we were looking for a creature in the Hydra, it was a great idea. But we wanted to figure out a way to integrate it into the way we had looked at fairy folklore. And um, we were really interested in, in things that had something to do with the natural world uh, and so I, uh, well, I also got a crazy idea and I sent Tony an email that horrified him uh, and it contained a link to something that I urge you never to Google, which is the Rat King. Does anyone know what a Rat King is? I heard some horrified noises. What's a Rat King? Maybe a really big rat? Maybe the ruler of all rats. Maybe just a really handsome rat? <laughs> what a, ra a rat king is actually um, a group of rats 
that are in an enclosed space so that their tails get tangled together with whatever you might imagine would be in that enclosed space, <laughs> which we will never speak of. Um, but, but in Tony's version, uh, they're tangled together in a, in a tiny bow. Isn't that pretty? Aww. Um, but so they're tangled together and the, the rats actually roll around like a single hideous entity eating whatever they come across and <laughs> I am the rat king. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Hold on now. I'm the rat king. I'm the rat king. Wait, 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 wait. I'm the rat king of pop. <laughs> what else? Oh, here, rat queen. The rat queen of England. <laughs> And what else? What else? Are we, oh, Rat Jester, always good. <laughs> the Rat Jester. When I was drawing these rats, I was thinking of Templeton and Charlotte's Web, but the old cartoon that I grew up with. So that would be like Paul Lind doing the... <laughs> oh, Charlotte. <laughs> I guess we're a rat king now. Let's go, boys. <laughs> a fair is a smorgasbord, smorgasbord. <laughs> The adults are like, ha, 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 the kids are like, <laughs> <laughs> lost. So, Rat King, um, there, aren't, there aren't actually any, um, any pictures of a living Rat King. However, there are uh, mum, almost like mummified Rat Kings, and that is the picture that Tony saw and why he has replaced it in his mind with the adorable picture that, that he draws. Um, but from it, I was thinking, well, well what, if, what if there were snakes that got their tails tangled together? That would be almost like a hydra. And then I thought, well, what if there were dragons that got their tails tangled together? That would be really like a hydra. And from there, we got... A fair is a smorgasbord, smorgasbord. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> oh, Charlotte. From there, we got that. That rat king, the worm king. Okay, hold on. There. <laughs> <laughs> because worm, of course, is, is a word for dragon. Yes, that's worm right. Worm is a word for dragon. Worm. 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 King. Worm. <laughs> Thank you, Alberta Siba. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, does anybody want this drawing? Anyone? Oh, look! Oh, they're awake now, Holly. Look, now they're totally awake. Oh, I tell you, I tell you. What, do, how are we on time? Are we okay with time? Do we have any time? What do we have? Close to two minutes. Oh, ten minutes. Nice. All right, we're gonna do a thing. We normally do this in a little store, so this should be nice and chaotic, but we'll do it anyway. Are you ready, Holly? We're gonna do trivia, and whoever gets Holly's trivia question correct will win this amazing masterpiece for eBay. <laughs> and I will sign it. Tony D. So it's worth 20 to 30 cents more than it would normally be worth on eBay. <laughs> All right, Holly, you think of a question. You guys think of the answer. Whoever gets their hand up first, I will hop out into the audience, and if you get the answer correct, you will win this lovely drawing and the amazing Michael Jackson Elvis Queen of England version of the Rat King. Okay. Are you so ready? This is, this is one, one for two? One for two. This is it. All right. You ready? I am ready. You guys ready? All right, now. Oh, no way, they're not ready. They don't want we, they're not ready. Are you guys really ready? 
You're choosing. You're picking. Don't even. Don't Affair even. Affair is a smorgasbord. Smorgasbord. All right. Here's my question. How do you How do you want to handle this? Ask the question. Whoever gets their hand up first and gets the question answered correctly. This is terrifying. All right, I'm getting back. You're terrified. Really well, far. I gotta get there. I'm gonna get down here. All right. All right, you guys ready? All right. Can you name for me five, five creatures from Arthur Spiderwick's field guide? Whoa. Whoa, real stiff competition. Okay. Um, let me hop right down here. I saw a hand go up. Hold on, hold on. Let me squeak by. Let me squeak by. Let me squeak by. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? How you doing? What's your name? James. How are we doing so far, James? Good. Good? Is it worth the price of admission? <laughs> He's not answering. That's, I'm sweating a little bit, Holly. This is good. Um, so where are you from, James? West Virginia. Really? And how's the weather there this time of year? Uh, good. I've been thinking about traveling there through the summer months. Is it, is it, there's a lot, a lot of sights there in West Virginia to see? Uh, sure. <laughs> All right, so Holly's put out a pretty tough question, but if you know the answer, you get two amazing drawings for eBay <laughs> of a rat king with Michael Jackson glove and a worm king with dollar signs around it. I don't know why, I just was, so do you think you know the answer? Okay, five creatures from Arthur Spiderwick's field guide. Take it away. Griffin. That's one. Ogre. That's two. Goblin. That's three. Dragon. That's four. And Boggart. Oh, Boggart, he got it! Nice! <laughs> nice! You won, dude! But that's not all! You get a free card! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Come on up. Which, how do you spell it? Your name? J-A-M-E-S. J-A-M-E-S. Okay, I think I can handle that. Let's come on up. Let's give a hand to James. <laughs> <laughs> All right. James, when you go to school on Monday, just put drawn by James. <laughs> and Tony D helped. A little. And for James. <laughs> All right, James, here you go. <laughs> want to do it again? You guys want to do it again? <laughs> All right, Holly. Holly, why don't you pick what I draw? Oh, I can pick? You can pick, dear. How about a goblin? A goblin. I like, I like it when he draws a goblin because it looks like my cat. <laughs> and it reminds me of home. Wait, wait, wait. You have a hairless cat. Your I cat, have a hairless cat. Wait, wait, wait. Cat. Your cat looks like this. That is what your cat looks like. <laughs> Not only does she have a hairless, wet sock looking cat, she has, <laughs> you asked for it. No. She also has the fattest cat I have ever seen. I swear, it's, this is life size, actual size. Ear, ear, head. I'm not kidding. This is what it's face. <laughs> this is so unfair to my cats. That is what your other cat looks like. <laughs> Look at that. He's trying to warm the hairless one with his body weight. It's okay, I know. She, she always leaves the air down low, but I'll warm you. I'll keep you warm. Oh, wow. Sweet. Well, you asked for it. <laughs> I still want a goblin. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. I forgot. It's a true story. Holly's 
People often wonder what our spouses do while we are away on book tour. Holly and I tour for a month at times. They get lonely and bored. Holly's husband finds tiny cat clothes. <laughs> I don't know where she, he finds them. There must be a tiny cat clothing boutique. <laughs> and he sends her photos of her cat with a tiny cat hat on and a sad little bow tie. <laughs> and then it just says like, miss you. <laughs> this is so not part of our shtick at all. We have just, we are so off track, right, but goblin. I'm having fun. All right, goblin, 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 I promise, goblin, goblin. Okay, one goblin coming up. All right, Holly, you think of a good question to ask, all and right, I will draw thinking. the goblin. A lot of people asked about the design of the goblins. Anybody here see the Spiderwick film? Anyone? Yes? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the Spiderwick goblins, which I thought they were very faithful with in the film, were inspired by um, creatures of the night. So like toads and frogs and bats and spiders and all those sorts of things. I tried to, and anglerfish. I love those weird, freaky, deep sea angler the fish. That, you know the kind of just like. <laughs> You've seen them in National Geographic. That's how I am when I'm hungry at night. I just and wait for food to crash into my mouth. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of where the goblin, he has like little, actually if you look real close, he has those little tiny spider eyes on the top of his head. Okay, there's the goblin. One goblin, Holly, it's all done. Here he is in all his wonderful goblin-y glory. You asked for it, you got it. One goblin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, you ready? You ready to pick? You guys ready to play one more time? More eBay art. All right. <laughs> okay. Since we have a picture of a goblin, I want you to tell me the name from the spider Chronicles of the Hobgoblin. Ooh, I see a few hands, Holly. I see a few hands. Yes, I do. I see some hands. Uh, he was quick, dude. I'm seriously, I thought you might have pulled an armpit muscle. Are you okay? I'm Your hand went up really fast. Okay. You've been practicing this hand raising technique for some time. It's called school. <laughs> <laughs> a month of this, guys. This is what we go through as authors. A month of this. <laughs> It wasn't just school, it was the hand school art guy who likes drawing fat cats and skin. It's school. Maybe you might want to, you know, okay. So do you think you know the answer? Yeah. All right, so the Hobgoblin from the Spiderwick Chronicles is named? Hog Squeal. Nice! Woo! You're awesome. What's your name? Michael. Michael, where are you from? Maryland. Maryland, where's that? Is this a trick question? <laughs> no. Sorry, I'm not that good at geography. Be a children's book illustrator and telling you no one will ever ask you where anything is. All right. All right. Okay, good, good. Come on up, get your piece. Or Michael. Excuse me. Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L. Tastes good. <laughs> there you go, Michael. Thank you very much for reading our books, Michael. Oh, come on. Do you know how nervous I am up here? Hold on. There, there you go. go. There you go. Thank you, thank you. Oh, he wants the cat one, too. Well, you're going to have to arm wrestle Holly for that. I think she was... Okay, all right, you can have the cat one too. Miss you, Michael. Dress us. Dress up, feed me. All right, there you go, Michael. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for having us. We have a great time. We will come and see you again. Stay dry. Have a great weekend, guys. Thank you. The Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.